Welcome to Training Tuesday, everyone. This is Heidi here with Dane Superior. And for those of you who don't know me, I am in the training department alongside Chuck Hoke. Most of you know him. I'm really glad that you're with us today during our Training Tuesday. And like usual, just want to go over a couple of things for the call prior to getting started. Everyone who has logged in, signed in, however you are for the uh, sound, you have been muted so that we can have no interruptions and you can feel free to hear the webinar. But don't let that stop you from asking any questions. Please feel free throughout the presentation to uh, do so either through the chat functionality in Zoom. And definitely at the end, we'll have a little mini question and answer session for you if you have anything pertaining to this webinar. Uh, so like usual, we um, are recording these so that if you've missed something or know someone who may benefit from hearing, you can get access to the webinars later on once they're posted either on the YouTube channel, that's Dayton Superior's YouTube channel, as well as the DaytonSuperior.com channel. Uh, website, excuse me. From there, you just search on Training Tuesday. You'll come up with two links, one to register for the next Training Tuesday, and then one for all of the past webinars that we've held. Okay, so just want to let you know that this is for training purposes only. It's intended for that, so if there's anything that you need as far as technical data sheets, safety data sheets, please go to DaytonSuperior.com and you can find all that information about all the products that we're about to talk through. So who is Dayton Superior? We are the leading provider of engineered solutions for the concrete construction industry, and we specialize in accessories, chemicals, forming, engineering, and of course, training. Within there, we have all of the like splicing, bridge deck, concrete repair and restoration, uh, tilt up, and of course, precast that we're going to be discussing today. We're ending our precast month, and uh, with us today, we have one of our technical service representatives. So I'm really excited to introduce Taylor Blankenship. As I said, he's one of our technical sales guys for the precast. And he has over 10 years, uh, beginning with an area sales representative, moving to dealer sales manager, and he's now the technical sales for the precast market. So 10 years in the industry, degree, and before that he had a degree, got his degree from the Ohio State University, where he belonged to the professional business fraternity. In addition, he's also a part of the Precast Pre-Stress Concrete Institute, as well as following the Minnesota chapter of International Concrete Rebar Institute, American Concrete Institute, National Concrete Association, and finally the Concrete Reinforcing Steel Institute, which we like to call CRSI. So with that, Taylor, take us away. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for the introduction, Heidi, and thank you everyone here for joining with us today. Uh, as she said, I'm Taylor Blankenship. I handle precast products for the Eastern United States. And today we're talking a little bit about building connections in precast. This will just kind of be a crash course, bird's eye view, some of the common uh, building connections you're gonna see in concrete panels, especially. Uh, so we can just jump right into it. So there's a few types of building connections we're gonna to touch on today. Weld plates, mechanical connectors, adjustable slotted inserts and shear connectors. So we'll jump in and uh, we'll start here with weld plates. Now weld plates are embedded plates or angles for wall panels. They're designed by engineers per project. So there isn't really a standard, I guess, design for weld plates. It's based on the application configuration of the panel, uh, what you need to get out of the connection. Uh, so it's not something off the shelf you're gonna be seeing. For that reason, uh, oftentimes they're fabricated locally uh, near a producer or in a fab shop that's joined with the producer. These Nelson studs to create a, a connection to the panel. And these aren't something that's manufactured by Dayton Superior for some of those reasons we mentioned, the lack of uh, standardizing, uh, it being different per job. Uh, this is something you're gonna see uh, more local to the production of the panel. So here you can see a standard weld plate uh, it uses the Nelson studs uh, on the back of the plate to create the connection to the concrete in the panel. Uh, the plate size lengths and various stud layouts uh, are gonna vary with any design. This is gonna be designed by an engineer based on the configuration needed 
uh, to meet the strengths and requirements of the job. Here we have some of these weld plates going in in a precast application into the bed. You can see that you know, it's going down with all of the reinforcement, cutouts, inserts, et cetera. And once that panel is poured, those Nelson studs will be embedded within the concrete, leaving a exposed uh, weld plate on the exterior surface of that panel. And here on the right, we can see uh, one type of final connection you might see. This is a panel to panel connection uh, between two panels. Uh, you can see the two embed plates are then connected on site once they're erected uh, to create a final connection, uh, welding that weld those two weld plates together with a, a strap of some kind is a typical application you'll see. Similar to those embed plates, you're also gonna see structural and base connections. Uh, this is just a steel embed plate, uh, again, designed by the engineer per job and per the requirements and per the uh, various, I guess, capacities needed per the panel. This is seen a lot on tilt-up panels. And the base connection that you're specifying is going to be based on kind of the procedure of the job, the configuration of the pourback strip. Uh, there's always going to be a relationship there in the design phase. Panel bracing design uh, will sometimes require that these uh, are welded, uh, the connections made at the time of bracing. Uh, so that's another consideration to have on site with these is, you know, you're going to have bracing and welding going on. Uh, and the capacities, as mentioned, are going to be determined by the uh, engineer on record for these. So this is going to be on the foot portion of the panel that's going to be connecting uh, to the footing um, or the slab. You're going to see that welded then once those panels are in place. You can see some pictures from the field. Uh, on the left, you've got a typical welding application. On the right, you kind of have a hybrid uh, where there's a weld plate attached to a, um, a brace connection bolt of some kind there. The panels need this permanent connection. Uh, most of them are going to be using weld plates uh, or something similar to this, unless you're in a seismic zone. At that point, engineers are going to be looking at other options uh, to meet the, re the requirements and the specifications laid out in that kind of, a, of an application for you. But that gives you a general idea of what you're going to be seeing. Uh, this would then oftentimes be poured back um, or covered up in some way. So that's kind of the, the base connection there that you're going to be seeing with the, with the embedded plates, weld plates. Here we have another typical application where you're attaching you know, some structural steel uh, to the embedded weld plates. Uh, you're going to see this quite a bit on commercial and warehouse. Uh, designs. They're going to be using a lot of these weld plates for their connections, whereas in the mid to high rise structures, you're going to be seeing a lot more of the adjustable inserts or slotted inserts that we mentioned before and that we'll talk about here in just a little bit. So that kind of covers the weld plates we're seeing here, but following in that, I guess, spirit of the base connections, this is our superior panel base anchor. We call it our PBA 10K. You're going to see this quite a bit more on tilt panels than you will in precast for now. Uh, but what this does is it provides a structural connection between the wall panel and the floor slab. It meets the current code requirements that require a 10,000 pound uplift resistance, uh, which is where that 10K comes from. Rather than requiring welding uh, at the time of the placement, like we mentioned before, this system uses a post installed brace anchor bolt. Uh, you can see here in the picture on the right, we have one of our Bearcat bolts installed on the left side of that picture. To install that, basically what you're going to do is you're going to install the plate on site, you're going to drill a hole, and then the Bearcat bolt is then torqued down in the hole to spec. This helps reduce the time and some of the additional resources you might need if you're welding on site, uh, which is a huge time saver, uh, reduces the amount of people running around. Uh, at that critical moment. And uh, it also helps in the pore design. Uh, as you can see here on the slide, it's, it kind of replaces some of the considerations you would need, it being not dependent on the footing elevation when you're uh, relative to the slab, as well as uh, the slab on grade can be poured full width rather than needing to do a pour back strip. 
So that can help in the design and uh, execution phases as well. Uh, it's got a lot of good options, a lot of good benefits there. So here we have uh, some pictures here in the field of our PBA 10K. Uh, I don't know if I've <laughs> mentioned through voice, but it was on the slide. This can be used with cracked concrete, as you can see here. Um, here are some photos of them being installed in formwork. You can see them laid out uh, similarly uh, with the inserts. Uh, we've got some thin brick application, it looks like there. Uh, and these are installed to your formwork before the pouring of the panel. And then in the bottom right here, we can see the plate has been installed. We are now drilling a hole to accept the Bearcat bolt on the right of that picture. Uh, it's pretty quick and easy uh, to get these things installed. We also option or we offer an additional option in use with the PBA 10K, our T29 shear connector. And what this does is it's an add-on to the system that instead of just having the PBA 10K uh, provide the 10,000 pound uplift resistance, this T29 shear connector provides in-plane and out-of-plane shear resistance. Uh, so rather than just the upwards forces, this will address the kind of sideways forces you're looking at. The complete system itself has a 15,000 pound ultimate strength. And if this is something you're interested in using in one of your projects, or had questions related to how it may replace some of the systems you're currently using, our engineers are happy to help you. As it says here, our calculations are readily available. We can talk you through some of that process. Similarly to the PBA 10K, this uses our Bearcat bolts. Here you can see the completed system with the T29 included. Uh, it's a three bolt system and is pretty quick and easy to get up and running. Uh, once those bolts are installed, you're good to go. And here we have Heidi, you may need to help me with this. I think I can activate this. We have a, a slick little video here, just kind of showing the product uh, and its life cycle here. You can see the nail holes on the side, assist in attaching your formwork, plate install, bolt install, Here's the pouring of the panel. And once if only your boards went up that fast, right? <laughs> <laughs> and once the panel is erected, we have our Dayton Superior cap there that shows you the location. You can install the plate, the T29 if you're using that, and then you simply install the bolts and that is going to make your final connection. So overall, it's a pretty slick product. Um, it definitely is a little bit easier and requires less of the, I'm not gonna say it's complicated, but less of the steps required if on site you're looking at welding. Um, this is a great option to cut down on some of that um, with, with tools you already have on site. So moving on, we're now gonna look at our grout sleeve as another connection we're touching on here today. Uh, this grout splicing sleeve uh, can be used either from precast to precast products or precast to site cast. And what this is going to do is connect the reinforcement between, let's say, a panel. So in the picture here, you can see a panel stacking application. If you're going up vertically, you can use this to connect your reinforcement from one panel to the next. And here we have a cross section of the grout sleeve. It's a really simplistic idea and design. Uh, it's basically a tube with interior baffles that accept liquid grout that's going to then create a connection to your rebar. Uh, some of the cool features there uh, are is the center stop pin. So that allows you to ensure that you've reached proper depth within the grout sleeve, uh, as well as just the overall design. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with our bar lock, uh, but the mechanical couplers like those this does not require any bar end preparation. Uh, so there's no threading involved to get this attached up to your panel reinforcement. You can see it makes use of a plug and two PVC ports. And here we can see in the bottom right, a typical installation application in a panel uh, at a producer. So you're connecting your interior reinforcement to the end of your panel. 
uh, the ports are installed. And then on site, those ports are going to be used. Imagine this panel going up. The bottom port will then have grout pumped in. And once the top port starts having grout exit, you've ensured that there's enough material on the interior to create uh, the splice you're looking for. So here we have kind of a use case for this grout sleeve. Uh, what you're seeing here is a panel being flown in on a high rise project. I believe Chuck said this was in Calgary. Uh, I wasn't there, I try to stay warm. Uh, so you have your panel flying in here. Uh, it's then being aligned and dropped into place on the existing reinforcement coming out of their slab. It'll then be you know, placed down, braced, and grout will then be pumped into the ports. So you can see the yellow caps of the ports on that top right picture. Uh, you'll then just go in there, pump your grout. Uh, once that grout exits, you know you've got the material and you are good to go. The grout will set up and your connection will be made. We offer a particular grout for this application, for this product. It's our D490. Uh, this helps you keep productivity to a maximum. Uh, it's a very uh, rapid strength gaining grout. And using this with our, our grout sleeve creates a consistent sort of uh, repeatable process for you. The test results in the top right, uh, you can kind of see how quickly this is gaining strength. So it allows you to move on to future phases of your project pretty quickly. Uh, we offer different consistencies of grout here, flowable and plastic when you're in warmer temperatures, along with the strength gains you can expect from those. Uh, and also in the bottom, a nifty little estimating guide that will give you an idea uh, when using this product of how much grout will need to go with your couplers. As the bar size increases, so does the size of the coupler. So you can see a number 18 uh, grout sleeve is going to uh, need a little bit more grout than say a number four, or number five, but this gives you a good idea of the minimum material you're gonna to need to have on hand to efficiently install this product. But together they make a great option, especially for stacking panels. If you're looking at doing, uh, you know, uh, cutting down on the overall production size of your panels and, and still getting, you know, pretty rapid installation on site. Uh, well, these aren't really a building connection, but we felt uh, that we should mention our shims as well. When we're talking about precast panel placement, uh, shims provide a service that can't be understated. Uh, they help to align the precast and tilt panels uh, that it corrects any of the irregularities you're going to see in the foundation. So let's say you've got just a minor uh, change in degree on your foundation. At the bottom of the panel, that's probably not going to create much of an issue, but as you go to a tall panel at the top of that panel, a small difference in the footing is gonna end up being a couple inches, uh, which is a problem. So shims are used to ensure that alignment of the panel on the footing. And they do a great job because they're manufactured from a high impact polystyrene, which means they've got a really good bearing capacity. The fact that they're non-metallic helps ensure that you're not gonna have any issues with rusting or staining down the line. Uh, these are pretty commonplace when placing panels. This is something Dayton Superior can offer. Uh, we offer a couple different options. Uh, in the picture on the right, you can see some loose shims. Uh, we offer those in different thicknesses and different lengths and, and configurations, different dimensions. We also offer shim packs, which uh, I know a lot of erectors like because they will come with various, I, I guess the easiest way to explain, it's a stack of shims that are banded together. Uh, so you can take your shim pack and then quickly adjust the stack by removing a sixteenth of an inch, let's say, or an eighth of an inch and a quarter uh, to get to the quick height that you need it to without just having to play, I guess, Django with shims. So these are an important part of any panel placement, something Dayton can offer. Feel free to reach out if that's something that you're using day to day. Now we'll move in to the adjustable inserts, the slotted inserts we mentioned earlier. Uh, for architectural panels, uh, you're often gonna need some adjustment when you're connecting to your building frames. And these adjustable inserts will have two common parts uh, in general. There's going to be a channel and then some kind of a connection, which is usually an NC nut. The panel to building connection is gonna use a strap from that 
adjustable insert to then uh, be able to be welded to uh, structural steel or use an NC rod if you're bolting to that structural uh, connection. Now these panels are gonna connect the concrete frame to the steel. And what these adjustable inserts really do and why they're called adjustable inserts is they offer a range of adjustment, which for us is typically four inches, six inches or eight inches. These inserts are placed at minimum in the corners of the panel, uh, but based on the size of the panel or the particular application you're looking at, they may be placed you know, at different intermediate positions within those four corners as well. Okay, so for the Dayton Superior inserts, we call them our core wall products. And we started working with the company Corewall in the 1980s. Uh, we helped distribute their products in North America. Uh, they originally had two design options, the P30 and the P31, as well as the corresponding straps that went with them. In 2004, uh, the second generation was designed, which is our P38. Uh, in 2007, we acquired Corewall. So now we handle all of the manufacturing and distribution for these products. In 2013, we designed a lighter duty P39, uh, which actually had a plastic body. It was a little more niche and uh, didn't necessarily find its footing at the time. So we've since dropped that, leaving us with the first and second generations being more of the standard that we see today. So you're probably wondering what these things look like uh, and I'm happy to show you. So here we have the P30. <clears throat> this is our first generation. This is gonna be the nut style. And what you're seeing here is the, the body of the insert with the adjustable channel on top, protected by that blue plastic. Inside that channel, you're going to have an NC threaded nut, which would then connect to your strap. So the two things you're really looking at dimension wise with these P30s, P31s and P38s is the length of adjustment. So the four, six and eight inch length of the channel as well as the depth dimension, the two and a half, three and a half and four inch, four and a half inch heights we have here. Uh, based on your application, there's gonna be something that's gonna work for you. Here we have the P31 strap style. Uh, the only difference here is that rather than having a threaded nut on the interior, uh, this actually just has kind of a keyway design. Uh, you see the same four, six and eight inch lengths on the channel. Uh, but rather than having the, the nut floating in the channel, uh, you use a T-strap to then connect, which you can see here. So imagine you're putting that in parallel and then twisting it where those indentations on the side will then kind of lock it into your channel. Uh, that offers you the adjustment uh, while also preventing it from exiting the channel. Now these are made to order uh, in different lengths, depending on how your connection is laid out. Uh, our standards internally with part numbers, six, eight, 10, and 12 inches. And uh, we can make these in plain hot tip galvanized or stainless steel finish uh, based on the requirements of the job. And then here we have the P34 threaded strap style inserts that are going to be used with the P30 on the left. Uh, the bolt portion is going to go into the channel, you connect it to the floating nut, and that allows you to then, you know, adjust and attach your, your strap there. So this is the first generation. Uh, these are a little less common now. We do offer them made to order. Um, so there may be a bit of lead time, but we have kind of moved on our standards to the P38, which you can see here. This is a nut style, so it is not available with a strap like the uh, P31 on the prior slide. This is a one piece steel. And as you can see, it does remove a lot of that material on the sides. So it, I guess, prevents a lot of the congestion issues you might see in placing these with your existing reinforcement. It has a larger nut than the P30 uh, and it's actually a double level nut. So if you look at it kind of side profile, it almost looks like a stacked pyramid where the bottom of the nut is protruding out and to fill in the shape of this channel, which you can see is stepped in design. We offer the same kind of adjustment lengths of the channel, four inches, six inches, and eight inches, as well as the standard heights, the depth that you're gonna have it go into your panel. 
two and a half, three and a half, and four and a half inches. Uh, it still uses a standard thread, the three quarter inch NC nut, and it has the same plastic void covers, nail holes to help with placement and installation. And uh, this design, while being more common and on the shelf, is also 25% stronger on average than the P30, the older style it replaced. Uh, and it does use the same P34 strap that you can see here on the bottom of the slide. You can also use the internal nut to connect to an NC threaded rod, which I mentioned was a standard thread. So if you are looking to bolt to any structural connection, that is also an option as well. So I think that concludes the bird's eye view of just some of the building connections we here offer. Uh, the weld plates, base anchors, uh, we've got some of our adjustable stuff we talked about, as well as the grout sleeves for connecting reinforcement. Uh, hope you guys picked a thing or two up that you might not have known, and I'm sure we will circle around and do some deep dives into some of these products in the future where we get into more of the technical side. Uh, but I think that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much, too. And he makes a good point. You know, a lot of these are, as he's calling them, the bird eye view. If you want more in-depth training or to continue on with anything, please email Chuck and myself. You can do that at training at DaytonSuperior.com, and that goes right to us, and we can set that up for you and customize anything that you might need. Um, again, these are either refresher courses or, or to get people on par to get to the next level. And eventually we'll be doing some of those too in our training Tuesdays, not quite there yet. So while I'm yakking about the next slide of our resources, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to do so at, uh, oh, I've got one here. I thought Dayton was just a product seller. How can I contact with Dayton in-house engineers? Taylor, do you wanna take that one or do you want me to? Oh, uh, yeah, sure. Uh, well, we have local sales reps to you, but we also have uh, forms on our website that you can fill out for technical assistance. It's just gonna ask you for your contact information and your basic question. And what that does is on my side of the business, uh, we'll receive questions from our region that we can then uh, reach out to you, uh, get a better idea of what you're looking for, and then allow me and guys like me to then reroute it, get with our engineers, we also offer the Tilt Group, I believe, has a direct line on our services and contacts page, which you may be able to reach out to um, to ask any engineering related questions. I know that's something we're always trying to improve on and uh, make sure that it's easy enough to get a hold of us. So that's how I would recommend to go. And, and I can kind of attest to uh, the fact that I do get quite a bit of those. So uh, if you do put in an online form request, we do see them. And, you should get a response relatively quickly. Yeah, and um, I'll be sure to add in some information or a link of sorts for the engineering and the form that um, he's referring to when I send out the email letting you know the video's ready. So watch out for that. I mean, we are we are a one-stop shop. Not only do we uh, give you the supplies that you need for you know precast, tilt, all that, we, we do engineering and training as well. So we're here to try to service all those needs. Is there any other questions? Well, as you're typing those up, let me talk to you about all the resources that you have available as well. Um, so on DaytonSuperior.com, you can go to any of these product pages that we've discussed. Um, the core wall, if you search core wall, you'll get to all of them. And then you can click into the individual ones you want. And sometimes there's a buy now feature. It depends on if, you, if it's eligible or the inventory is there. In addition, we have technical data sheets, engineering specs, uh, the handbooks, the handbooks are a great thing. Um, we just talked about engineering. We have an engineering page that you can access that technical assistance right here. There's, that's actually where that form is that he just referenced, that you could fill that out. And it's, it's just a way to get everybody who needs to be involved to contact you and so that we can better service your needs in a quick manner. In addition, we have a field installation instruction guide for the PBA 10K. And then, of course, contact information, as well as training information, if you are yeah, requiring that. So I also want to let you know about our training promotion that's going on. Um, it is per customer. So if you've already taken advantage of it, great. I hope you're getting your training and you get your, your percentage off in April. But we have all of these various trainings that you can sign up. They are 30 minutes. And if you have a Dayton Superior uh, representative come do that for you, then we, you can get that discount off in April.
And for me personally, I want to hear from you. I want to know what do you want to see in these Training Tuesdays or if there's anything special. Um, or if you have something that you, you know, want to just tell me, please be nice. I do cry. <laughs> so uh, just let us know. Training at JaneSuperior.com is the email address as well. So if there aren't any other questions, that's all we have for you. And look at us. We went right to 130. Fantastic. <laughs> Okay, well then all of you guys have a great Tuesday. I hope to see you next week. We're having chemicals. Um, Jeff, who is on the call, is scoping out what to do. He's gonna be doing a conversation with us on TopCast next Tuesday, and then we're gonna continue on with other chemicals. So be sure to sign up for that, and until then, I'll talk to you. Bye now.